Ah, the Toronto Raptors, man. Just three years ago, this team had won a championship. That run was brought together by, of course, Kawhi Leonard, who the Raptors made a big move to get, trading their franchise star in DeMar DeRozan. A risky move considering that Kawhi was coming off a calf injury and had one year left on his deal. What Kawhi Leonard did in that run was unprecedented. I mean, it propelled him into, like, all of fame status to be honest with you and it's widely regarded he's widely regarded at that excuse me as the greatest raptor of all time but we're not here to talk about Kawhi Leonard we're here to talk about the raptors right now and it's not looking so good for them the raptors adopted this like five-man lineup that they originated last year five guys playing 40 minutes a game and it worked last year but this year it's not looking so good on the season the raptors are just 14 and 18 and over the last 10 games they are three and seven and i'm recording this video right after a crazy game by pascal siakam man he had 52 9 and i believe seven or eight something crazy we're gonna get into him a little bit later but just talking about the raptors as a whole this season has not been very kind to them and it's been very weird this year because i mean their defense is good at times you know it's definitely very good their physical style of defense where they like to double team the opposing team star player it works but for them it's been offense and they really struggled in that department the raptors are not good shooting the ball they can't rebound all that well they don't pass the ball much i mean it's just sloppy all around and there's a lot of things that you can attribute to that for the team there's really five key players that you want to talk about that's fred van vliet gary Trent jr scotty barnes og ananobi and pascal siakam but let's get into that core five what's their futures looking like what's gonna happen with them what are they doing right now that's so bad let's discuss so when talking about the core five, I believe the first player you got to talk about is Scotty Barnes. I mean, he is or supposed to at least be the guy to keep the Raptors relevant for the next 10 or so years. The rookie of the year just last season, Scotty Barnes was expected to make a huge offensive leap and he just hasn't done so. On the year, he's averaging less points than he did in his rookie season. He's averaging more turnovers. He's rebounding less. He's passing more, which is good, but he's shooting the ball worse from the field. It just hasn't really looked too good for him. A lot of people question what's going on. What's happening? Why is Scotty Barnes playing this bad? And I mean, the dude's only 21 years old, so I, obviously that's not his final form. He's going to continue to get better and better and better and better and better. But you can also attribute this to another player still in the show from him. And it's a good segue to talk about Fred Van Vliet. Man, Fred Van Vliet has been stinking it up this season for the Toronto Raptors. Fred Van Vliet is averaging 18 points a game, 6 assists, which looks good on paper, but he's shooting 37.9% from the field and 32% from three. And might I add, he's taking eight threes a game, so he's getting them up. <laughs> but they not going down. And I mean, Fred Lee has always been this kind of player, you know, he's never really been a super efficient. That's just because he takes a lot of threes. I mean, over half of his shots are coming from the three point area. He's not someone with a crazy good handle. He can't really finish at the rim well. And I mean, it's just all types of bad, but you can't hate all the way on Fred Lee, man. He's one of the greatest undrafted players we've seen in NBA history. NBA champion, all-star signed a big like $80 million contract. But I just believe it's time for Fred VanVleet's time to come to it does that make sense it, it, it's time to trade for Van Vliet. i mean it's pretty obvious but the biggest question is where do you trade him to i mean looking at the teams what team could really use his services get some teams i think maybe the pelicans you can probably trade him to the clippers celtics made a bucks i don't know i think you have to look to trade for Van Vliet, though i feel like his time in toronto is slowly coming to an end i feel like it probably should have came to an end last year when his trade value was at his highest when he was playing at an all-star level and he's just not playing that good anymore simple as that the third person i want to talk about is og ananobi and just talking about him really fast i mean he's having a career year he's averaging nearly 20 points a game and he's i think is to be the leader in the defensive player of the year voting i like og's game a lot man he's gotten better each and every year of his career he has battled injuries though which is pretty sad to see but i mean he's been able to get over that i mean he's been able to continue to be that monster defensively while continue to evolve his offensive game and get better i think he's here to stay and I want to talk about Gary Trent, but let's be honest, who really cares about Gary Trent Jr., man? I mean, he's cool. If you can't trade him, I would. I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm not the GM. That's Misai Ajiri's job, not me. And last but not least, we got to talk about Pascal Siakam, who is having an elite NBA season. You talk about career highs and points, rebounds, assists per game. He's shooting 47.6% from the field. He's playing at all NBA first team level. Now, he won't, you know, get that nod because there are people playing that good as well or better than him at that. But it should be acknowledged that Pascal is killing the game right now. I mean, like I just talked about earlier in the video, he just had a 52-9-8 game. Come on, bro. 
come on bro stop playing with pascal now if you guys remember that suns video that i put away in like may i talked about the suns potentially making a move for pascal that ship is sale that ship is sale man the price don't went up trading for siakam you're going to have to give up a bag and because of that right there i could see the reasoning for toronto making a move or i could see the reasoning for toronto not making that move keeping him building around him og and scotty and doing that i don't know but it's obvious that the raptors have to do something because i mean you talk about the moves they made recently it's been real quiet i mean the one move they made over the last year is like you traded for thaddeus young and you gave him a first round pick which is pretty crazy i don't know why you did that um a lot of talks were like oh they had a deal in place to get cam reddish and the knicks backed out to the last second or whatever there's also talks that like Musai Jerry didn't see that much of a drop off from the quality of players from like late first round to the early second. I don't know, man. Look, long story short, we know the guys on this team that have value. Do the Raptors rebuild? Do they retool? Or do they continue going with what they got? I think you got to rebuild, man. It's time. I like Pascal Siakam's game a lot, but I mean, his value is at an all time high right now. So the time is now to make that decision on moving off from him, because let's be honest with the way the roster is currently shaped up, they aren't really doing anything in the playoffs and they might not even make the playoffs at all. As they said, it's the 10th seed right now. You have this generational talent in the draft of Victor Wim Benyama. Let's go ahead and sell ship, fire sell, get rid of any asset except for OG and Scotty that has value, tank the season and hope to get a top three top four top five pick because if you end up with a scoot henderson or a victor wimbe pairing that up with scotty barnes and og ananobi you cook with some gas for the future man